All right, today I wanted to talk about an omen that happened also along with the Charleston church shooting that happened at the Mother Emanuel Church. So I, I already have spoken about this event and an omen that, experience, that I experienced in the moon video, the video about uh, moon omens. So you can go on and look for that on my channel and watch that one first. So this was like the very morning after the Charleston church shooting. And this was a very, this was like a very big uh, deal. This was a massacre. Um, as I was saying earlier, uh, it was a big deal. See, when you get a text message uh, in terms of omens, that's a great, great modern tool we can use for omens. When you get a ding or a beep from a text message, if you're not thinking about anything, it doesn't mean anything. But if you are thinking, contemplating, or deeply, or trying to say something, or considering if something is true, if you get that ding that goes off, then it probably is true. So I'm glad that went off because I've been meaning to kind of give some more modern things that we can do, modern tools for uh, omen reading and for understanding what life is trying to convey to us at any moment in time. So with that being said, the morning after that church, that church shooting where just to recap quickly, um, a young racist punk kid tried to start a race war by uh, being in a Bible study and at the very end of it at night, there were only like 12 people in the room and he kill, killed almost all of them except like one person. I think he thought he killed her, but he didn't. She survived and he went to actually kill himself and he, and he ran out of ammo and he was out of it. And so then he fleed and ran. Um, he, his intention was to start a race war and he had all these like, you know, political manifestos about all that stuff. But what actually happened was it only brought the entire Charleston community so much more together. It brought up the, the, the undercurrent of racism that is in Charleston because it's one of the 13 original colonies. It's where the slaves actually had to go through. So there is a lot of old heavy karma with that and it's hidden underneath the ground. It's, it's a, it was in a dormant state, we could say. And this activity, this, this event brought it up. It brought it out, but it actually brought it out in a positive way that led to more healing and, and growth as a whole in the community, in the area. There were no riots that happened here. Uh, it wasn't like other cities like Baltimore where things have happened. And this was just such a directly wrong situation. There was no way anyone could, could support this kid. Whereas some of the other shootings and things that had happened were a little bit more a little bit more uh, controversial. This was just so black and white, which is rarely the case. So anyways, the morning that that happened, I, I read about it on Facebook. Everyone I knew was like, find this kid, find him. He, ha he hadn't been found yet. I went to turn on the garden and this was right before the solstice. So it was really, really hot here. It gets extremely hot. You can imagine if it's this sunny in late February, the downside is August is pretty miserable. <laughs> um, okay, so this was really, really hot. And I turned on the sprinkler for the garden at the front of the house. So the sprinkler was running for 10 minutes or so at least. And then I walked back to the garden and I saw this massive king snake, a big black snake, just cooling off in the sprinkler like he had been really hot, you know, because it was a hot day and it hadn't rained in a while. That was when I was running the sprinkler. That was why I was running it. And so he was just in there just cooling off and just really... Uh, embracing that coolness and you could tell he was enjoying it i was like six feet from him before i saw him moving around and i was like wow and he was like six feet himself so i was in awe of him and i let him have the garden but i immediately saw the connection because i was deeply cogitating on this situation this this most tragic event uh in my hometown so right away though right when i saw that i knew that it was actually going to be a very positive experience overall for the whole community <laughs> it was going to be a positive experience like uh, while it was a tragedy the overall reaction was going to create a positive transformation and a positive transmutation of all this heavy karma and that's what snakes symbolize they symbolize transforming transformation and transmutation because they can like shed their skin and leave that and, and go into a new skin. They also, it, it takes like almost everything to kill a snake. Uh, you can cut off a snake's entire tail and its head will actually still be alive. There are all these old folk myths about, you know, a snake that had its head cut off and hours later it bit 
dog, you know, or a dog was sniffing it and it bites the dog. Um, there are tons and tons of myths and stories about that because snakes really do stay alive actually for a long, long period. And in terms of uh, like animal cruelty and things, if a snake is dying or is appearing to die, it's actually considered to be best to just like to, to kill it completely and to like crush its skull. I know that sounds horrible, but it's actually considered to be the most humane thing because that snake will use every last bit of its energy to regrow its tail and all those things until it withers into death. Um, but snakes, so snakes are like really hard to kill. Um, and they're really resilient, and that's what Scorpio is about. And Jaimini describes Scorpio as um, one of the words he uses, Sari Shripa, which literally is a Sanskrit word that means a snake or any creeping reptile animal, but it's also a name for Vishnu. So it's about, Scorpio is about seeing the serpents, the demons, the difficult, scary things as also God, and as something that will actually is just as much God as everything else and something that they need to deal with rather than hide from or run from. And so snakes and, you know, even dragons and myths and reptiles and these, they, 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 they creep and crawl and they slither on the ground, they go into holes, they go beneath the surface. So they symbolize hidden subconscious, like, issues, things that are beneath the surface that we don't normally dig up and deal with. And so this was a major thing like that, the racism, you know, that, you know, the city was kind of, innately connected to the slave trade and things so there's a lot of that but the actual people themselves aren't racist and we we seek opportunities all the time to demonstrate that and to prove that so this actually this event while it was horrible that people had to die it ended up being a profound event that everyone expressed their love and their universal brotherhood and i go into that more in that unity bridge walk and the moon omen so watch that video that that was about the same event and that's how that's one way this was demonstrated was that profound big walk on the bridge that I mentioned, the Unity Walk, where even Stephen Colbert and all these people were there for that. Um, so this this was a big event, but one more crazy factor is that this was a Bible study, and these were real, true, practicing Christians. And the one Christian that survived, she actually forgave this kid Dylan Roof to his face via a video conference. She told him like, "Look, we forgive you. It's up to God what He does with you now." And that was profound to me. Like, that still gives me goosebumps now just thinking about it. And that one experience, the spiritual growth that that woman probably had, you know, is in, in, in un, incomprehensible. Um, so that was pretty profound, the fact that they were able to forgive that entire experience. So there was just so much growth that happened. And I just knew that that was going to happen right when I saw this king snake. And then I went and asked a friend about snakes, and the king snake actually is immune to the venom of other snakes, and actually eats other snakes' venom. Isn't that profound? That's showing how, and it's a black snake, so it's a big one, it's black, it's showing how the black community and black culture was not going to be thrown back by this poison, and that it actually was going to eat this snake or this poison and transmute it and grow from it. So it's a pretty powerful omen. Um, it was just a perfect symbol of like the higher side of Scorpio, which is about taking pain and poison and transmuting it and making it valuable, making it useful. Um, Scorpio is the opposite of the bull, the Taurus, which has all the wealth. It has milk and plenty and land and symbolizes resources. Scorpios don't have that. They have to survive with an inner resource, an inner strength, nothing physical. And so it's the ability to, to weather these things that life throws at us. That's really the, one of the keys to Scorpio. So this was a great omen that helped explain that.